Sam Houston! Jeff, wake up. You overslept. Whoa. Where am I? We're in Marfa, man. Why am I in a teepee? Because we're in Marfa, man. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, I'm up! I'm up! This episode was made for y'all with the help of our awesome partners. Check the caption for more info. Marfa is way, way out in West Texas. Over 400 miles from Austin and San Antonio. Over 500 miles from Dallas. And even 200 miles from the nearest big cities of El Paso and Midland. So unless you're tripping from nearby Alpine or Fort Davis, you better plan ahead. So seeing as how Marfa is about a day's trip from, well, everywhere, we drove in yesterday so we could spend an entire day in town. And because a literal day trip to Marfa would look something like this. All right, kids, that's Marfa. Back in the van. Put down that dog. And while the joy is truly in the journey, we would have missed just way too much stuff in Marfa. And besides, I got to stay in a teepee. That's the wrong hat. <laughs> much better. All right, let's get moving. Nothing quite like waking up in the desert air at El Cosmico, a commune of wacky accommodations that epitomizes what this West Texas town has become. Part homage to the past, part glimpse into the future. Part West Texas, part Mars. And after a good night's sleep, I'm ready to hit this town running, starting with breakfast at Marfa's Swiss side. Welcome in to Squeeze Marfa. And here's its owner, Verena Spenton. A Swiss cafe in yes. West Texas. Yes. Where, where did this come from? Well, why not? <laughs> oh, I, why no, not? I retired out here and I got bored. And okay. in 2004, I opened this. Oh, all right, yes. all right. And I'm no longer bored. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell. Do, do the mountains here remind you of the Alps? Not really. I, <laughs> Not I actually, so much. <laughs> I actually think it's it's just it's the other extreme, and that's why I like it. Yeah, while the Texas landscapes may be a bit different, the food is classic Swiss, all the way down to the chocolate. Vollenweider. Vollen, Vollenweider. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's my maiden name. <laughs> name. Yes. Tell well, me a little bit about it. Uh, you know, when I started this, I asked my brother, "Yeah, we should have your chocolate," <laughs> and so <laughs> sure. I started importing chocolate. But not just any chocolate. Vollenweider chocolate. One of the finest chocolates in all of Switzerland that's been places like, oh, the White House, Space, and Marfa. But I think technically you have to eat a meal before you get dessert. And as they say, when in Marfa, eat as the... What is it, a Marfin? Um, a Marfin. <laughs> my, my husband likes to say Marftonian. Marftonian. I like that one too. Yes. And today, going Marftonian means going to Switzerland. <laughs> All right, so whether they're squeezing juice or you're squeezing into your table, this is Squeeze Marfa. And I've got some Birchen Müsli. It's a chilled cereal with yogurt, mixed berries. Mm. Oh, I like it. It's kind of oatmeal-y familiar, but the grain is cut totally different. And the berries and yogurt are delicious. It's nice to find a healthy breakfast every now and then. Now some protein. That's really good. If this is any indication of what this day has got coming, I don't know what to expect. So without further ado, let's see Marfa. And why not start from the best vantage point in town, the tip top of the Presidio County Courthouse. Built in 1886, when Marfa was just a dusty desert water stop for the railroads, Marfa's definitely grown since then, but not all that much. Up here in the top of the courthouse, you get a view of the entire town. It's just a couple city blocks in every direction, and then beyond that, the mountains. To think just a couple days ago, I was standing in the swamps in East Texas, and now I'm out here in the middle of the desert. Ha, ah, that's Texas for you. And all of this is Marfa. All 2,000 or so residents of it. From up here, Marfa looks pretty typical for a small town, but amongst its old buildings and its single yellow stoplight, it's a progressive culture unparalleled in small town Texas. Buildings that are normally occupied by antique shops house world-renowned art foundations. 
Marfa even has its own public radio station, and its bookstore is the epicenter of culture and cool. Speaking of cool, Marfa's fashion is pretty darn cool too. In fact, the town actually has its own high-end fashion district. Does Prada store seem a little out of place to you? Built in 2005, this ain't no store. This is artwork. No employees, no credit cards accepted, although you can window shop to your heart's content. Although I have to warn you, everything in here is from the 2005 collection, and who would want that anyway? <laughs> Built by a European art duo, Prada Marfa is a monument to consumerism, frozen in time by the side of Highway 90, which keeps the people coming, even without a single thing to buy. I warned you that Marfa was strange, but how did this desert town become such an artistic hotbed? Well, the answer to that question lies with the granddaddy of the Marfa art scene, the Chinati Foundation. So Marfa really was just a small town on the vast open desert, which is exactly what attracted world famous artist Donald Judd in the 1970s. And at that point, for Marfa, everything changed. Judd saw the sparse and open landscape of Marfa as inspiration for his minimalist art. Judd and the Chinati Foundation needed a place to house all the artwork, so they bought and restored the old D.A. Russell Army Fort, where visitors can see some of Judd's most famous works, like this one, 100 Untitled Works in Mill Aluminum. It's an installation of 100 metal boxes, all the same size, but all different. Some have slopes, some have angles, but they all occupy an old army shed with huge windows to pour light over the shapes. Hard to believe that this shed actually used to house German prisoners. As you can clearly see, Judd liked boxes, but these metal boxes pale in comparison, size-wise at least, to the huge concrete ones sitting outside, a work titled 15 Untitled Works in Concrete. You know, seeing these boxes from a distance is one thing, but being down here and interacting with them is totally different. It's really cool, I mean, they're massive and heavy and arranged all completely different and they make your voice sound really cool. Chet, I'm a concrete fox in a field. Thank you for visiting me. Boxes in rows, boxes in lines, boxes in the grass. 15 clusters of concrete boxes, all the same size, but all configured differently. Some of you probably don't get it, and I'm not sure I do either. But the simple strangeness of this idea alone is enough to make it cool for me. I think I like it. And lucky for us, the dozen or so barracks contain works of artists from all over the world. Like this untitled work from New Yorker Dan Flavin. The different works housed at the Chinati Foundation range from the bizarre and cool to the, well, just bizarre. I give you Kabakov's school number six. Um, I got nothing. But the Chinati art stretches throughout Marfa, including a gallery downtown housing the works of John Chamberlain, the car crusher. Hulk crush car. <laughs> And while important works of art generally come with a no-touch policy, that's not always true in Marfa. Siesta time. But wait, siestas come after lunch. So where can a starving artist or starving day tripper get a bite to eat in this town? Well, the obvious way to get food in the desert, of course, from a shark. A 1974 Ford Brothers work truck shark, serving not shark chum or even seafood, but Mediterranean, and owned by local food shark, Adam Bork. Did you just have to cut the hole in the side? Yeah, I cut the hole myself and made this little, I can't believe this is holding together after these six years. So yeah. why why a Mediterranean restaurant in West Texas? We're the only one. <laughs> We're the only one. Because they're the only yeah. one. And that's the other owner, Krista, hanging in the kitchen. A fan of street food she is, and I am too, and uh, desert food, West Texas, falafels, desert food, I don't know. It just hurt. Like, we didn't want to be a taco truck. We sell tacos sometimes. We had tacos today, but we're yeah. not like a taco a truck. truck. We occasionally will have tacos. So how would you describe your, your clientele? What's the vibe? Yeah, it's, it's you know, it's, every, it's everyone. You know, you've got your uh, 
young kids, uh, art monsters, whatever you want to call them, art, you know, interns at <laughs> Chinati or Judd or whatever. You've got the, some of the local population, the lady that works at the prison, they, they order six things a day almost, so the prison guards eat here, and then we got <laughs> ranchers eat here. And... But this eclectic bunch has one thing in common. They're all here for the food. And the one dish in particular I'm dying to try is called the Marfa Laffle, which apparently is pretty popular as the food shark has officially sold out. Come on. All right, so I drive six, seven hours all the way out here just to eat a Marfa Laffle. And who does the last one get sold to? This man. Hi. Was it at least good? C'était excellent. <laughs> excellent, excellent. I'm coming every day to have a mouth falafel. Every since day? I'm here. Yeah, oh. since January. And so you get to eat it every day, and then you took the last one yeah. from me. You got some pieces left. I'll buy them from you for $10. No? Man, these guys love their falafel. I might just have to go with whatever they got left. Check. Even if it's vegetarian. I'm used to barbecue, but this'll work. Okay, so rule number one at Food Shark, get here early. Rule number two, get here earlier. But, you know, I don't get a chance to eat many green things on the day trip or so. A veggie hummus wrap is quite refreshing. Besides, look at this, we got tomatoes, romaine lettuce, Kalamata olives, feta cheese, yogurt sauce, hummus. You didn't expect a day tripper to go vegetarian, did you? Why not? If I start doing the veggie tripper, uh, that's when you can shut me down. Really, really good. And I do love the hummus. This is really tasty. Really, really good. Considering many artists are vegetarian, maybe this is what I've been missing. Maybe now I can truly create brilliant art. Yeah, I could do that. Second thought, that is a terrible, terrible idea. I'll just stick with day tripping. So that begs the question, what is there to do in Marfa for the non-artsy types? We now interrupt this programming to remind you to like and subscribe. Now back to the road. Well, Marfa has no shortage of history or historical buildings like this one, Hotel Paisano. While mostly a cattleman's hotel in its heyday, Hotel Paisano has one giant-sized claim to fame, as in the 1956 classic Giant, which was filmed here in Marfa. Liz Taylor, Rock Hudson, and even James Dean stayed here at the Hotel Paisano. But the largest movie relic isn't in this museum, but west of town. The remains of the movie's Riata Mansion, Built as simply a front facade for the movie, the past 50 plus years haven't been nice to the Riata, which is now just a couple sticks in the sand. Now you might have already known Marfa was famous for art and even giant, but you probably didn't know that Marfa is world famous for gliding. To catch a piece of the action, I'm headed to the Marfa Municipal Airport to meet up with Marfa gliders and the soaring sensei himself. All right, so this is Bert, who's gonna take us up into the sky. And so I'm very excited, I've never done this. So tell me a little bit about what, what this is. Well, this is called soaring or gliding, and we're gonna go up in our sailplane, our two-seat glider, okay. and then we'll cut loose, turn away from the tow plane and its rope, and we'll start soaring around, gliding slowly down through the ocean of air, back to a safe, soft landing at Marfa Airport. At least that's the idea, because you heard Bert right. This is gliding. No motor, no jetpacks, just air. And this spot in the West Texas desert just happens to be one of the best places in the world for it. 
it's off the beaten path, as you well know. Sure. And just like hiking in Patagonia or climbing Mount Everest or, or snorkeling in the Cayman Islands, you have to go to where it's the best. And that's the whole point of Marfa, Texas. And it's legendary. That's cool. Well, I'm definitely looking forward to this moment right now. Let's take this thing up. Let's go. All right. It's the ultimate in aerodynamic technology. If you notice, there's very few things that stick up on it. There's no rivet heads or bolt heads. It's almost an art form, the way they look. Bert, thank you for flying with me today. Keep your hands off the controls. Let me do the work back here. <laughs> no, yeah, <laughs> just kidding. I won't touch a thing. Serious business. And as I'm about to take off, the butterflies in my stomach are already in full flight. I talked myself into doing some crazy stuff. No turning back now. Marfa traffic, Skyline tow plane 81 Delta and glider are uh, preparing to uh, depart uh, runway 22. And Marfa traffic, uh, of the tow plane, it's much like any other flight I've taken. A bit loud and a bit bumpy. But here's where the gliding comes in. As Bert pulls a cord, we detach from our tow plane. And then it's just us in the sky. There it is. And now we're soaring. As the loud engine fades away, all that's left is the whisper of the wind on the glider's wings as we go adrift on the ocean of air. Wow. How do you feel? I'm feeling good. Okay. I mean, Bert, there's just no word. This is oh, just the sensation of being this close to the sky. From up here, I can see for hundreds of miles in every direction. The Davis Mountains, the Chinati Mountains, and even the Chisos Mountains of Big Bend, almost 100 miles away. This is God's country. You know, before today, I thought gliding was just about going up and then gracefully falling down, but not so. Bert is constantly reading the clouds, looking for rising columns of air called thermal uplifts that take us even higher into the sky. And there's a special atmospheric occurrence called the Marfa dry line, which separates the moist air of the Gulf of Mexico from the drier air of the Pacific. And oh. this colliding of air right here over Marfa often lends itself to very, very good soaring conditions. Now, some of you might be thinking, ain't no way I'm flying without an engine. But with an FAA certified pilot and instructor like Bert, who's logged more than 7,000 glides, I'm in very good hands, and you will be too. And while he could literally stay up here for hours, in our case, what day trips up must day trip down. Just like that, we are safe and sound, back on the ground. Good day for gliding? Oh, every day is a perfect day for gliding in Marfa, Texas. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Come on out and fly. Yes. You know, I think I believe him on that one. Perfect day for gliding, leading up to the perfect night. Some of y'all might know what I'm talking about, but we'll have to wait till sundown to know for sure. And no better way to kill a few hours than with the Padre. In this case, Padre's Marfa, which hasn't always been the kind of place you want to hang out. And I sat down with owner David Beebe to hear the story firsthand. Well, this was the, uh, for many years, was the funeral home for the, uh, for the city, but it was it had been closed for quite some time. There were a lot of problems, so it took us almost two years to finish renovations to get open. Did you have to come in here and gut out like old embalming equipment and stuff? Or like... uh, the sink, the embalming sink is our mop sink. <laughs> uh, so, oh, but no, that stuff was gone, okay. except for the sink. And there are some people in town who are spooked and will not come in here. Seriously? From the older generations. Yeah, there are some that will not come in. Their loss, because there are plenty of reasons to come to Padres. Club, restaurant, just hangout place. The game room, sports bar, Wi-Fi. We do a little bit of everything here. Family friendly. We got lots of kids running around usually during the daytimes on weekends. And, oh, that's great. And kind of the Chuck E. Cheese of Marfa. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, it's good. I like that a lot. 
Chuck E. Cheese, perhaps. But Padres is definitely the official Cajun eatery of Marfa. Well, tell me about the uh, food. Beaumont Boudin? How'd that end up out well, here? Well, I'm, I'm from Houston, and I used to work at a little Cajun joint. Taught me how to make gumbo and red beans and all that stuff the Gulf Coast way. Marrying the cultures of Texas together yeah, out eat. here. Hey, well, thank you for talking to us. And uh, we'll, we're going to hang out here a little while and just enjoy ourselves. So appreciate it. Thanks, Chad. Yeah. And just like the legends of Marfa, Padres fits right in. And you know what? I feel like I'm fitting in here too. But being a Southeast Texas boy, those red beans and rice are calling my name. Marfa never fails to surprise me. Swiss food for breakfast, Mediterranean for lunch, and now Cajun for dinner. Oh yeah. I know good Cajun food, and I can vouch for these red beans and rice. Well done. Mmm. So with a well-fed stomach, now it's just a matter of killing time and waiting for the sun to go down. You see, every proper day trip to Marfa must include nightfall, because as the sun sets, a different kind of visitor comes to town. The Marfa Lights. And another friend for the finale of this day trip, local expert Tex Toller. All right, man, so I've heard a lot about the Marfa Lights. And this is, we just look out here and they show up? They're, you know, they're not on a schedule like the, like the geyser at Yellowstone, <laughs> but yeah, people see them. And uh, uh, I've seen them several times since I was a kid. What's the explanation? You know, they've had people come here and, and do seismic studies, geothermal and electromagnetic, and they don't know what it is. That's why they're called uh, mystery lights. Aha! Uh -huh. And some people will only see the car lights coming on 67, but since they have been seen since the 1880s, it's unlikely that there were car lights out there. Yeah, very unlikely, I'd say. Well, I like a good mystery, and so I'm happy just saying, hey, this is an unexplained phenomenon, and we just enjoy it. Now we just, we just settle in. Settle in and wait. And wait we do. And the sun goes down, and we keep waiting. But then... Whoa, 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 what's that, what's that? Look over there. That little, little pinpoint of light just appeared on the horizon. Yeah, 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 that's a Marfa light. You know, you don't know if you're gonna see one, but boom, there it is. Wait, 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 but what's that? Over there. Yeah, that's a Marfa light too. Wait, but it's getting closer. Whoa, 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 guys. Guys, that's coming right up on us. What, wait, what is that? What a day it's been. From art that blew my mind as wide open as the vast Marfa sky, to a glider that took me straight up into it. Sure, Marfa may be in the middle of nowhere, but isn't that exactly the point? Well, I've come to Marfa and I shall never be the same. I have decided my destiny lies with the Marfa lights. So I'll see all y'all in outer space. Via con Dios, amigos. Funny. I'm sitting here giggling, going, don't giggle. Don't giggle. All right. Wrong hat. <laughs> you know, seeing these boxes from a di difference. <laughs> what is wrong with you? I know. Something. Something is terribly wrong with me. <laughs> That, that goes in the credits. Howdy, y'all. Follow along with my adventures at Chet Tripper on Instagram and at The Day Tripper TV on Facebook and YouTube. Or head to thedaytripper.com for travel guides, past episodes, and info on our mobile app and Team Day Tripper.
This episode was made for y'all with the help of our awesome partners. Check the caption for more info. Howdy y'all, Chet the Day Tripper here. Thanks so much for tripping with us. Uh, remember, while you're here, like this video, subscribe to our channel so that we can stay out there on the road and keep on tripping. Did we miss anything in this town? Leave us a comment, let us know. We love finding out about new stops with all your tips. And if you love Epic Texas Day Trips, remember to check our channel. We got a lot of them on there. Also, don't forget, if you want some sweet Day Tripper merch or another cool Texas-made product, Come see us in Georgetown at the Day Tripper World Headquarters. You can also shop online if you check the link down there in the caption. All right, y'all. Bye, con Dios, amigas.